Hello and welcome to EUTV Sports Update. We'll be looking at the latest sports news from Evangel University and around the region. I'm Kyair Warner. We'll also look at college games around the nation and check out the latest happenings in professional sports. I'm Sarah Cummings and this is Sports Update on EUTV. some really good games to cover today. Absolutely, we've got some basketball games to talk about, mm -hmm. and then Cross Country had their NAIA, NAIA championship. They so did, a lot yeah. of good stuff to cover, some volleyball news as well. Yep. Should be really good, and then we'll take a look at some of the professional games. Yeah. We'll have a good show today. College and NFL, Absolutely. we'll get into it. Evangel women's basketball team got their first win of the season on the 19th and spent Thanksgiving break preparing for their first conference matchup of the season. On Saturday, the Valor faced Culver Stockton in Canton, Missouri. Evangel started off slow, scoring just nine points in the first quarter to Culver Stockton's 19. A big seven, second quarter put the Valor down by just three at the half. Defensive pressure from the Wildcats forced several turnovers in the third quarter and allowed the Wildcats to get hot. Turnovers continued to plague Evangel in the final quarter, and Culver Stockton ran away with this one, taking the 72-57 to victory. Points off of turnovers were the story of this game. Culver Stockton scored 28 points off of turno turnovers, while Evangel scored just seven. On Saturday, the Valor have another away game against Grandview. After going 5-1 and one through their non-conference schedule, the Valor basketball team set their sights on their conference opener against Culver Stockton. Three Valor players scored in double digits during this game. Manrique Alvarado led with 16, followed by Edrio Martinborough and Steven Salvi with 15 and 12 points, respectively. Despite playing a fairly tight second half, Evangel's play in the first half was enough to push the Valor to their fifth straight victory, 83 to 68 over the Wildcats. On November 18th, Ethan Montgomery and Skylar Adams traveled to Tallahassee to represent the Evangel cross country team in the NAIA cross country national championships. Excellent running from both individual athletes resulted in strong finishes. With Adams highlighting the meet with a PR time, Montgomery finished ahead of 83 other national qualifiers in this meet, running a solid 26-49-8K. Adams had an exceptional day at the championship, smashing her PR by 25 seconds and finishing with a time of 18.55, which placed her in the top 31% of the field. Adams finished ahead of 225 other national qualifiers in this meet. The academic all-district volleyball team recognizes student athletes for their success on the court and in the classroom. Top students across the nation are selected by college sports communicators to receive this honor. Four Evangel volleyball players were named to the CSC academic all-district volleyball team. Sydney Dunavant, Tori Lowry, Aaron Russell, and Sierra Reyes qualified for this honor with a cumulative GPA above 3.5 and significant contributions to the team on the court. Congratulations to those four athletes. So shout out to those volleyball girls, you know, really good yes. job getting recognized for their academics, you know, on, so that just proves that they're taking care of everything they need to be taken care of on the field and off the field. Yeah, absolutely. No. And being a student athlete, it's, it's a lot. I mean, that's what you are, you're a student and an athlete, but mm -hmm. to be able to be on the team, contribute, travel, be at practices, and still yeah. get it done in the classroom. That's a big deal. Yeah. So that's a great honor. And then shout out to Skylar Adams for demolishing her own PR. Oh my goodness. 25 seconds, that is a big jump and that's hard to do. And mm -hmm. she went out, especially in, in nationals. You know, exactly, she, she yeah, national championship. You know, mm -hmm. you'd expect a little bit of nerves, but to go out there and to run the best race of your career is outstanding. So mm -hmm. congratulations. Coming up next, I'll be here with Evangel women's basketball coach, Preston Beverly. 
And later, we'll look at some of the most significant college games from the weekend and some interesting NFL games. We'll be right back. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. love. Welcome back. I'm here with Evangel Women's Basketball Coach, Preston Beverly. Thank you, Coach, for being with us here today. Uh, it's my pleasure. So your season's underway. Yep. So tell me, like, how's it going? How do you think it's going so far? Uh, you know, it is a work in progress. We've got some phenomenal young women uh, who are working hard every day. Mm -hmm. uh, even this morning, got up early again to get up some extra work, extra skills. So uh, they're putting in a lot of work, and I think that as the season continues to progress, mm -hmm. we're gonna, you're gonna see some huge, huge, huge uh, improvements. Are there so? Are there any of those players like just standing out right now, like? You know? Honestly, I would say it's it's everybody. Uh, we've got a really great senior class, yeah. uh, and this senior class is is super vocal. Uh, being two years in the system now, uh, have a better understanding of the system than they did last year, yeah. and they're really able to articulate that now to our junior class, where we have some transfers, yeah. sophomore class, and obviously the freshman class, who's brand new to, to college. So, mm -hmm. I would say from a as a whole, the group is is just they're gelling really well, and they're. They're, they're doing really well. Okay, that's amazing. So it's like, as far as the freshmen, are there any of them, any of the freshmen that are like standing out to you, like exceeding? Um, you know, all of them in, in their own way, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Amaya Bonds, young woman from BB, uh, Arkansas, super energetic. Like she's, she's playing hard and getting better and making strides every single day. Oh, yeah. uh, Lila Watson from Ozark, uh, tremendous shooter, knocking down shots and pivotal points for us in games. Uh, Emma Mullins coming from Stratford, uh, just a really high IQ player, super smart. Uh, and Kate Gilbert just giving us a, a really good, like spark off the bench, instant offense. Um, so really, you know, all of our freshmen are, are all okay. contributing. Uh, in their own individual ways. That's good. So it sounds like you got a lot of really good things going on. Mm -hmm. So like, can you tell us how this year is different from last year? Um, this year is different. So for me, it's year two. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have returners that have an understanding and concept. So they're able to actually teach uh, the new players, which is, as a coach, you, you want to have that. That's one of the things that you, you relish. Yeah. Um, I would say this year is different because now having different players in different roles and, and trying to, to get it all to kind of mesh and gel. Uh, and again, as a coach, that's something that you, you kind of anticipate. You yeah. know, it's, it's year two, so you don't have necessarily players who have been in it for three or four years where they have a total understanding of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they don't know what roles are yet. So it's being able to articulate that to them, yeah. work with them in that, build them in those ways. Um, so I, I would say from this year to last year, it's having some consistency, but now brand new roles. So just trying to work through those. Okay, that's good. So so you guys played Culver Stockton. Ugh. So, <laughs> and so that's one of the stronger teams in the conference. So can you tell us, like, your thoughts on that game and how that went? You know, um, it, it went... Uh, well at times um, and then we kind of had some hiccups so you know I think again when you're talking about a team that has seven new players whether it be transfer freshman whatever yeah. you're gonna hit some bumps in the road and you're gonna have some stretches that look phenomenal I mean when you watch that game we're playing up tempo so we're pressing we're trapping uh, we're doubling we're we're causing chaos mm -hmm. but then offensively we're we're a little stagnant we're a little slow sometimes defensively we're missing some rotation so you know, for us, as we continue to grow as a group, 
Um, it's being able to extend those stretches of greatness yeah. and limit those kind of imperfect moments. We call them brain farts, brain fart <laughs> moments where we just give up two wide open layups because nobody talked and got back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, in that game, you know, saw a lot of really positive things and we'll start to hopefully see more of those, uh, again, for longer stretches moving forward. Yeah, most definitely. And then, so you got Park yep. as your next opponent. So as the coach, like, what's your thoughts going into that game? We got to be Park, right? Yeah. <laughs> as a coach, um, you know, whoever. The next game is the most important game. Yep. So for us, it's Park, and we got to beat Park. And I think that uh, we put together a really good plan mm -hmm. with our players uh, to be able to give us the opportunity to be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, I know one of those plans is having all the fans come out. Please, 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 please. please. <laughs> Come support us. I know people are coming out and watching the men, and they're doing a phenomenal job. Uh, really excited for Bert uh, and our men's team, but we need just that same energy. I watch yeah. I, the live stream. I'm at the games. I see nothing but energy, fans in the stands. We need those as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So aside from, like, Park, so what are some other strong teams in the conference that you're kind of, that you think about, that you're looking forward to? So... Sure. So uh, when, you're, when you're in a conference, right, you're always looking at the top. And the two teams that are up at the top right now are nationally ranked number five and number six. Yep. So it's Clark and Central Methodist. And they actually played on Saturday. And Central Methodist, who's number six in the country, beat number five in the country. Hmm. Um, so it's always kind of looking at them and seeing, OK, well, what are they doing? How are they being successful? What are some things that we can kind of do to emulate them? And I feel like, again, when you look at position by position, I think that we've got the same type of skilled players, athletic players. Yeah. I think from a system, our system works best for us. So when I look at Clark and I look at CMU, granted, hey, we gotta beat Park. Park is the most important game right now. When we look down the track and look at those two teams, I'm really excited because I feel like we've got a really good product that by the time that we reach those two teams, yeah. we'll be able to get, get some success. That's good. That's good. And so aside from just being in basketball and winning games, what's something your students are gaining from being part of Avenger Athletics? Sure. Um, so I, I think there's a couple of things. So um, as a program, we're pouring into them constantly. Uh, we've got a women's leadership series that each month uh, a different woman is, is pouring into them, whether it be talking about athletics, talking about motherhood, talking about just being an independent woman. Um, having your own job. So we've had several speakers come in and talk about a myriad of different things, um, as well as just kind of their own personal walk with the Lord. Um, in addition to that, uh, they have um, student-led devos. Um, you know, we pray as a group, we talk as a group. So while it is basketball and that's kind of what brought them there, we're pouring into them more than just that because at the end of the day, um, regardless of the level that they end up playing, if they mm -hmm. play overseas or stay here, basketball will stop. Yeah. So it's about being able to give them the tools that they'll need to be successful in whatever, whatever it is they're doing, whether yeah. it's motherhood, whether it's being a business owner, um, whether it's being a coach, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's being able to give them those things every day. Well, that's amazing, Coach. And well, we are all out of time, but I want to thank you for being here today. Thank you. So yes, and best of luck to your upcoming uh, in your upcoming games, coach. We need the student support. Come and support. <laughs> Coming up next, we'll look at some of the college games and NFL action from the weekend. Stay tuned.
I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. In college football, the number two Ohio State Buckeyes faced the number three Michigan Wolverines. Both teams went into this battle undefeated, but only one team could remain that way. Ohio State got on the board first with a touchdown on the opening drive of the game. The game was tight in the first half with the Buckeyes leading 20 to 17 at the halfway point. The Wolverines would score on the first drive of the second half, putting them on top. After a couple punts, Michigan would score another touchdown at the beginning of the fourth quarter. With the score now 31 to 20, Ohio State needed to answer fast. Ohio State kicked a field goal with seven minutes left to make it a one score game, but Michigan would answer immediately with a touchdown. Back to back interceptions thrown by Ohio State quarterback CJ Stroud would seal the Wolverine victory. Michigan running back Donovan Edwards had a stellar performance with 216 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Number five, LSU fell to Texas A&M 38 to 23 on Saturday night in one of the most shocking results of the rivalry week. The defeat in College Station, Texas marked the Tigers third of the season, ruining any chances they had of making the college football playoffs, despite entering the game as the first team out of, out of the four team field. The Aggies owned this contest from the outset. Star running back Devon Echain scored from 10 yards out to cap a 10-play, 90-yard drive midway through the first quarter that gave the Aggies a lead they never relinquished. Echain had a total of 211 yards with two touchdowns while LSU's offense lost their momentum every, every time they started to gain it, which resulted in their loss. The number eight ranked Clemson Tigers hosted South Carolina on Saturday. Clemson got out to an early start, scoring two touchdowns in the first quarter. At halftime, the Tigers led by, with a score of 23 to 14. A solid third quarter by South Carolina would make it a 30 to 28 game, with the Tigers still, going up, still up going into the fourth quarter. A South Carolina field goal with 10 minutes remaining would be all they needed because neither team would score again. South Carolina pulled off the upset in this 31 to 30 defeat over Clemson. The Rams traveled to Arrowhead Stadium to play the Chiefs and struggled to gain momentum and get in the end zone much against the Chiefs defense. The Rams came into this game starting Bryce Perkins at quarterback due to their veteran quarterback Matthew Stafford being on concussion protocol. Perkins threw a total of 100 yards with a touchdown and two interceptions, while Patrick Mahomes threw two, 320 yards with a touchdown and one interception. The Chiefs defense shut down the Rams' run game in all aspects, and since they were already short on yards through the air, it gave more time for the Chiefs' offense to do what they normally do and score. So Chiefs took home the win, 26-10. The Arizona Cardinals hosted the Los Angeles Chargers in an afternoon game on Sunday. The Cardinals were up 17-14 at halftime, and the game stayed tightly contested throughout. Cardinals kicker Matt Prater missed a 49-yard field goal to start the second half. And a field goal by the Chargers tied this game at 17, but the Cardinals answered immediately when Kyler Murray connected with James Conner for a touchdown. Six straight punts between the two teams left Justin Herbert and the Chargers down by seven with less than two minutes to play. Herbert completed seven of eight pass attempts and led the Chargers to a touchdown with 15 seconds remaining. Choosing to go for the two-point conversion instead of tying the game with an extra point, Brandon Stanley's trust in his young quarterback paid off with this game-winning two-point conversion from Justin Herbert to Gerald Everett. Herbert threw for 274 yards, three touchdowns, and tacked on 38 rushing yards. You know, looking at that uh, Chiefs game, uh, the Rams came in the game with their full defense. You know, the mm. same defense they had when they won the Super Bowl last yeah. year and everything, but they just 
they could not stop Patrick Mahomes in his offense. You know, they just oh they, they were able to drive the field in the run game and the pass game just very well on them. And then also they didn't have their starting quarterback, Matthew Stafford. Right. So that held them back a little the bit. The Rams' well. struggles this season have really kind of been mind boggling to yeah. see a team coming off of the Super Bowl and to come out and just not impress anyone. That defense yeah. couldn't really do a lot to stop the Chiefs. And then you have Justin Herbert with probably the biggest drive of his NFL career mm -hmm. so far. That was amazing. And then when you're the coach there, I feel like a lot of times you just kick the extra point, yeah. trust that you've got some momentum and go into overtime. Yeah. But it all boils down to that one play and they got the two-point conversion and came out with a win. Mm -hmm. So a gutsy call and an amazing drive by Justin Herbert. When we come back, we'll have the EU TV Player of the Week. We'll also have your upcoming Evangel Games of the Week. We'll be right back. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Thank you. Thank you. It's time now for the EU TV Sports Player of the Week. This week's EU TV Sports Player of the Week is Steven Salvi of the men's basketball team. Salvi is a 6'4 junior guard from Boca Raton, Florida. His three-point basket put Evangel in the lead late in the game for the eventual win. Salvi scored 12 in the Culver Stockton game, along with eight rebounds and a blocked shot as well. Congratulations to Steven Salvi for being this week's EUTV Sports Player of the Week. Congratulations to Steven. That was uh, that's an awesome game all around by yeah. the basketball team. And he to have eight rebounds, that's a pretty good contribution yeah, as well. Yeah, he played really points. well defensively and offensively. And, he's, and he, was, uh, he was had really good confidence out there just playing to his uh, best and just, hmm. you know, going fast. He never really got tired, it didn't seem like. Absolutely. And now we're going to go to the upcoming games of the week. Women's basketball is playing on Wednesday, November 30th. This is a home game against Park at 530. And then on Saturday, they're on the road in Iowa against Grandview. The men's basketball will be playing Wednesday, November 30th at 730 versus Park in the Ashcroft Center. And then Saturday, December 3rd at 2 p.m. at Grandview in Des Moines, Iowa. Go, Go Vangel Valley! <laughs> Only basketball left mm -hmm. to talk about now, yeah. but I got some uh, big high in, uh, expectations for them this season. You know, they've been starting off strong, the women mm -hmm. and the men, so hopefully they just keep doing what they're doing and keep winning games. Yeah, absolutely. Fall sports are done, so now we're just kind of in the winter, which is basketball. Yeah. We've gotten to talk with both coaches, both men's and you talk to women's today, and I feel yeah. like they're going to have some pretty good seasons. I'm excited to see oh, yeah. how that goes. They've got strong leadership and some mm -hmm. good players. Well, that is all the time that we have today for this sports update. It's our last edition of Sports Update for 2022. I'm Sarah Cummings. And I'm Kyer Warner. Be sure to join us next semester as we bring you the latest in sports news. For more information on Evangel Sports, go to evangelathletics.com. This has been Sports Update on EUTV. Merry Christmas. See you in January.